Hello and welcome to the BigML tutorial series. This video is a brief discussion of the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning techniques and why this difference is important. Let's begin with supervised learning. The basic idea for supervised learning is that your data provides examples of situations and for each example specifies an outcome. The machine will then use this training data to build a model which can predict the outcome of new data based on these past examples. So consider a data set of homes that were recently sold. Our first example home could be 3,125 square feet with five bedrooms and three baths, and we might tell the algorithm that this home sold for $530,000. Next, we might provide an example of a 2,100 square foot home with four beds and two baths that sold for 460,000. And maybe another home with 1,200 square feet three beds and one and a half baths that sold for 250,000. The goal of training is then to be able to ask the machine if another home has 3,950 square feet, six bedrooms and four baths, how much do you predict this home will sell for? The important thing about supervised learning then is that it has a very specific structure. We have rows of data, each of which is an example of something we are using to train the model and each row has at least one column with a known outcome, sometimes referred to as a label, that we want to associate with that example. In the housing example, this was the sale price. Let's take a quick look at the types of questions that can be answered with supervised learning and the type of data you would need to provide. First, as we already saw, you could ask, how much is this home worth? Where you would train the model using the previous sale of other homes. You could also build a model which tries to predict if a customer will default on a loan. In this case, we would need to train the model with previous loans where we have labeled each one as being eventually paid off or defaulted. Sticking with the loan idea, we could also ask how many customers will apply for a loan next month. In this case, we would need to train the model with examples of previous months of loan applications. And finally, we could try to build a model that answers the question, is this cancer malignant? where we would train the model using measurements and statistics for previous cancers that have been labeled as benign or malignant. So let's review the key characteristics of supervised learning. First, the training data has at least one feature that is the outcome. This is sometimes referred to as the label or objective, and the goal is to build a model which can predict the outcome for new instances. A little extra definition here, if the objective is categorical, this model is called a classification. Whereas if the objective is a numeric value, then the model is called a regression. Now, because the data has a known value for each example, the model can also be evaluated. This can be done by splitting the training data into two disjoint sets, the training set and the test set. The model can then be built on the training set and used to make a prediction for each instance in the test set. Now, since you have the predicted value and the known value for every example in the test set, you can estimate the performance of the model at making predictions. Finally, the BigML algorithms that can be used for supervised learning include models and ensembles, logistic regression, and time series. So how does this compare to unsupervised learning? In this case, the training data provides examples, but we have no specific outcome. That is, there's no label anymore. In unsupervised learning, the machine instead tries to find interesting patterns in the data. So we might start with a data set of transactions where we know the date, customer, account number, authentication type, purchase class, zip code, and the amount. Notice that there is no specific label. For example, a label indicating which of these transactions are fraudulent and which are not is not present. So what kinds of interesting patterns can we discover in this data without a label? One possibility called clustering would be to look for examples that are similar and group them together. So here we have two transactions that are both on Wednesday using a pin number for authentication and both are for gas and both less than $100. 
Another idea, called anomaly detection, would be to look for rows that are very unusual. So here we have a transaction that is for an unusual amount, zip code, and purchase class for the customer Bob. Or instead of looking for entire rows that match, we could try to find rules that associate between the features. In this case, we can see that when the customer is Bob and the account is 3421, then the zip code is often 46140. And when the purchase class is gas, the amount is typically less than $100, and so on. So let's consider the types of questions that can be answered with unsupervised learning and the type of data you would need to provide. You could ask, are these customers similar, which would require training with data containing your customer profiles? Or perhaps, is this transaction unusual, like the anomaly detector example we saw previously? And this would need to be trained with a list of previous transactions. Or are these products purchased together, like coffee and milk, or peanut butter and jelly? And to find these types of interesting patterns, we would need to train with examples of previous products that were purchased together. So what are the key characteristics of unsupervised learning? First, the training data has only examples and no specific outcome. This is actually more common. Labeled data is typically hard to come by and very expensive to generate. The goal in unsupervised learning is to perform discovery rather than to predict. And it is worth noting that this is typically less well-defined and therefore more difficult. The big ML algorithms available for unsupervised learning include clusters, anomaly detection, association discovery, and topic models. And finally, note that because the training data has no specific outcome, we cannot evaluate the output of these algorithms as easily as the supervised learning case. That is because there's no ground truth that we can compare to. However, each of these unsupervised techniques has its own quality measures that specify the strength or relevance of the patterns being discovered.